Hi guys, welcome back from the ad break. We are still looking at the concept of quadratic equations. Now we're going to look at how do we then solve quadratic equations, right? What are the main things that you need to look forward to? What are the principles? I'm going to give you one principle and then tell you about factorization just so that we can refresh our memory as to how do you then factorize when given a quadratic equation. So let's have a look at it. Now, firstly, we have what you call a quadratic equation, right? To solve that, you always need to make sure that you first rewrite it in standard form. That's your very first go-to place. You do not do anything unless it is in standard form. Number two, you then factorize. You know the types of factorizing. It's not only about two brackets. It can also be a common fact. And then from there, you apply the zero factor law, which I'm going to show you just now. Lastly, I want you to always check your solutions, guys. Why is this important? It's because you come out of the exam knowing exactly that I got this right, I got this incorrect, and you might have time to fix the ones that you got incorrect. Now, the principle of solving, which is actually called the zero factor law, says that if a multiplied by b is equal to zero, then either the a will be equal to zero or the b will be equal to zero. What does this really mean? Let's take, for example, the a is the one that is zero. It means that I will have zero multiplied by b, which is definitely going to give me zero. So you can see it gives me the, the, the right-hand side there. Now, let's take if b is the one that is 0, it will be a multiplied by 0 equal to 0. Because a multiplied by 0 is definitely 0. So that's why both of them will then be solutions. But it is an or situation, not end. Because if you say end, then it's like you're saying they are intersecting to each other. And they are not. It can either be this one or that one. That's why we use the or word. Now the example of solving quadratic equations using this principle that we just spoke about. If I was to write this in the form of my a and b, this will be the a and the whole bracket will be the b, right? So remember my law said if a multiplied by b equal to zero, then a will be equal to zero or my b will be equal to zero. So that's where we're taking this from. Meaning, this will be x is equal to zero, that's one solution, or the x plus three will be equal to zero. But at all times, because we're trying to solve for x, it means x must be left on its own, on one side, and then an equal sign to show that we have found the answer for x. So this becomes then x is equal to, so you subtract 3 here, you subtract 3 there. Why? Because it's the additive inverse, right? Making this to be equal to a negative 3. So my two solutions here will be x is equal to 0 or x is equal to negative 3. Remember what did I say? Because this is, an quad is a quadratic equation, it definitely needs to have at most two solutions. Maybe someone might ask, how is this a quadratic equation because there is no squared? If I was to multiply out this x inside the bracket, this will give me x squared plus 3x equal to 0. You see, so my squared is definitely there, just that this was already simplified for us. Another example now is when I have two brackets. Right, You know when you have to expand this, it will definitely give us a quadratic equation. Maybe let me quickly show you that before we can even solve it. But you don't need to do what I'm showing you now. This is just for me to show you the quadraticness of this particular equation that I've given you. So x multiplied by x, you know, will be x squared. x multiplied by 2 will be negative 2x. And then 3 multiplied by x will be 3x. And then lastly, 3 multiplied by negative 2 will be negative 6 equal to 0. So automatically you can see my squared is there. And that's what I said was the definition of a quadratic equation. 
Now, to solve this, remember this is my A, that is my B, it is equal to zero, and it's a multiply between the two, right? And we know according to this, it means A will be equal to zero, or B will be equal to zero. That's the principle we are using. So, it will be X plus three equal to zero, or x minus 2 equal to 0. If I solve for x, I will get x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to a positive 2. Now, remember my last point when I spoke about how to solve this. I said check your answers, right? Let's quickly go back to the previous one. If I check my solution here, I said the first answer is 0. As soon as I have 0 and I have a multiply by something, automatically it just makes it 0, right? So this solution is correct. Let's test for the negative 3 there. It will be minus 3 inside the bracket, minus 3 again, plus 3. And then minus 3 plus 3 is 0. Multiplied by negative 3 will be equal to 0. So the left-hand side is always equal to the right-hand side for it to be correct. With the one that we just did as well now, if I substitute my two values there, firstly, if I substitute negative 3, it becomes minus 3 plus 3, which is 0. 0 multiplied by anything gives us 0. With the 2, if I substitute 2 here minus 2, it will give me 0. 0 multiplied by anything is always going to be 0. So both my solutions are correct. Now remember, to, to solve a quadratic equation by factorization, the first thing you always need to do, guys, I will keep on emphasizing this, is to make sure that your quadratic equation is in standard form and one side is equal to zero at all times. And then the very first thing to do after doing that is to test for a common fact, right? But because here we have a zero, it becomes a bit easier for us to deal with the common fact, right? It's actually the highest common fact, meaning you will divide every term by that common factor that you got, and the right-hand side, because it's zero, remember anything, di zero divided by anything, I mean, will always be zero. I just cannot divide by zero, but I can divide zero by anything, and the answer will forever be zero. So that's where the nice thing comes in here when we're dealing with an equation as opposed to an expression. An expression, if you take out a common factor, you will remain with your common factor until you get to your final answer. But with an equation, as soon as you take out a common factor, you can just divide both sides by the common factor and it will then go away because of the zero on the right hand side. So please remember that as we going through these questions. Now, when you look at the last sign and the factors of the constant, right? The factors of the constant will be the last term. Firstly, with the signs, if the sign of the last term is positive, it means my two brackets will either be positive and positive or it will be negative and negative. What determines whether it's positive and positive or negative and negative is the middle term. So, if I have ax squared plus bx plus c, I'm just writing it in standard form. The middle term here is a positive, right? And my last term is a positive. It means my solution will have two brackets that are positive. But if it now becomes ax squared minus bx plus c, the last term is still positive, but now the middle term is the one that's now negative. Then it means my two brackets will be negative and negative. So that's what determines whether it's a plus and a plus or a minus and a minus. But definitely as soon as the last term becomes a negative, then your two brackets will be different, right? It will be plus and a minus. And then the most important thing here will be to always look at the middle term. So I will say to you, just for an, an, an additional note for you, the bigger factor, right, the bigger factor in the bracket, I will say factor, gets the sign of the middle term. The sign of the middle term. 
of, uh, I'll say, M term, right? So the bigger factor always gets the sign of the middle term. So let me make a quick example. If I have x squared minus 2x minus 3, right? And I want to factorize this. I know it's going to be x and x. My factors will be 3 and 1 for the last term. And then because the last term is a negative, it means I must have a plus and a minus, right? But now, where does the plus go? Where does the minus go? That's where you consider my additional point that I just gave you now. The bigger factor will get a, the, the, the sign of the middle term. So my bigger factor here is 3. It means that's the one that must be minus, and then the one will then be a plus. So that's how you really look at how to then place the two signs. So the typical example of solving for x using factorization, you look at it, is it in standard form? Yes. Is there a common factor? No. Then you go straight to a factorization. The last term is a minus, it means my two brackets will then be a plus and a minus equal to zero there. So it means this will be x and x, and then I will have three and one minus plus, and then my two solutions will be x minus three equal to zero, or x plus one equal to zero, then my x will be minus one, or my x will be equal to a positive three. And those will be my two solutions for this particular question. Another example where now the coefficient of the leading term is not one, you still do the very same thing, factorize, right? I know this at times is not easy to do, to do the factorization. It becomes 2x and x. Now I need to place my 3 strategically. It must be such that after foiling out this thing, I get 1 as the middle term. So it means my 3 will be there and my 1 will be there. And remember I said the bigger factor always gets a negative. It will be negative. It will be plus because my middle term is a negative. Then it becomes 2x is equal to 3 or it becomes x is equal to minus 1. I hope now you are following how we do this. And then my x will be 3 over 2 because I need to divide both sides by 2. And then or my x is equal to minus 1. And those will be my two solutions. And then remember to test your solutions right after working it out. And then another example as well will be minus 5x squared plus 7x minus 2. One of the main things that I will always say to you is after writing it in standard form, just make sure that the leading term, meaning the term that has x squared, is always positive. It makes it easier for you to factorize, right? It is possible to factorize it like this, but it's easier to factorize it if it's a negative. So it's a positive, I mean. So just make sure that it's always a positive by dividing everything by positive, which will then give me 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 equal to 0. And then you open your two brackets. This will be 5x there, and it will be x. Then it will be 2 here, it will be 1. Remember, the last term is a plus. It means it must either be plus, plus, or minus, minus. Because of the middle term, it therefore becomes minus and minus equal to 0. And I will have 5x is equal to 2. And then my x will be equal to 2 over 5. Or my x will be equals to 1. Then you can quickly go back to all of them. So I'm just going to go to all of them to show you how you then test this, right? You substitute this on the original equation I had given you, not the one that you factorize. Because at times you might miss a number when you are factorizing and you are testing it with an incorrect thing, then it will definitely be incorrect. If I substitute my minus 1 there, it will be negative 1 squared minus 2 into negative 1 minus 3. The negative 1 squared, you know, is 1. This will be plus 2 minus 3. And this is definitely equal to 0. And the right-hand side is 0. So the negative 1 is correct. Then with the 3, it becomes 9 here when I substitute it, minus 6 
minus 3, which is also equal to 0. To test this one quickly as well, if I substitute my minus 1, it will be 2 plus 1, which is 3, then minus 3 is 0. And then with the 3 over 2, it will be 9 over 4. You times it by the 2 here, it, gi it gives us 9 over 2. And then 9 over 2 minus 3 over 2 is definitely going to be um, 6 over 2, which is 3 then it gives us zero. So that's how you then test this one. Then the last example where you need to test, substitute your one, definitely it will be minus five plus seven, which is two, minus two is zero. You substitute this one, you will see and press your calculator if you are not sure with your mental meds, and it will definitely give you zero is equals to zero. Therefore, your two solutions will then be correct. Okay, guys, that's it from me. I hope you are having so much fun. But for now, I want us to take a quick ad break. And when I come back, we'll then look at some more quadratic equations together. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. 